Howdy ho, friends and foes, and welcome to Dads on Life, your weekly episodic show about parenting from a male perspective. I'm your host, Jay Miles, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Keith Logan. Good early morning. Chad Holloway. Hello. And Doug Hammondy. Morning. Today, we're going to be talking about, um, to me, what is one of the worst nightmares as a parent. And that is the uh, national, what became a national story several weeks ago. It started out as in the beginning of September, really late, late August, early September. It was started out as a father's plea to find his missing daughter. Within the last week and a half, um, it went from a missing persons case to remains being found in Wyoming and it being identified as his daughter. And it is the murder of Gabby Petito. And we'll get, we'll basically, honestly, if I'm as people, not as parents, uh, we could just pretty much say, feel sorry for the family. I hope they find the little bastard and kill him. And put him to death for killing her, which he probably did. Um, that would be all, and we could drop it at that. But I mean, I'm sure we, as a parent, I, I'm out of my mind about this. So, um, who uh, who wants to kick us off here? I'll, I'll kick us off. You, you know, I, I think it's hard you know, having, having kids and that, that is what you're talking about. You know, losing, losing a child is one of the ultimate, ultimate worst things that could uh, happen to someone. And, you know, even, you know, it doesn't matter if it's driving, you know, I know with Frankie growing up, it was be careful. And I'm always trying to, trying to make sure he's being careful when he's driving. And he recently had his 21st birthday and on his 21st birthday, you know, I'm calling up for going, Hey, be careful don't drink too much. I know you're going to be out partying and, and just like trying to, trying to help him to manage and to think about the things. But, you know, did I do that when I was his age? No way. I just kind of let her, let her fly, right. Let her rip. And I kind of did whatever, but my concern and, you know, and, and talking to him was like, Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to be a downer on your positive, you know, on, on this, on your great party here, but at the same time, please be careful. I don't want anything to happen to you because the kids are so important to us. But when you have somebody taken from you, like she was taken from her parents, it's just so sad. You know, you don't, you don't have, you know, she, she looked like a beautiful girl. It sounded like she had so much potential, you know, and that's from an outsider looking in, but then you, you add the sentimental, the sentimental attachment that the parents have. And it's just such a horrible, such a horrible event that, uh, that could happen. And then at the hands of somebody who supposedly loves her, uh, you know, they've been living together and everything. And, you know, I, I don't know what's going to, ha what, what happened to him, but I, you know, he seems kind of like a weasel. So, you know, to your point, I know we've been having these discussions off camera as well. You know, he might be, he might have committed suicide, but I think more than likely he probably doesn't, uh, he's probably too weak to do that. And he's probably out hiding somewhere. Uh, oh, he, yeah, there was a, I'll, I'll explain, explain that in a minute. Go ahead. Yeah. But so, so anyway, it's, it's just a horrible thing. And everybody, you know, I, I feel so much for the parents and, uh, you know, we had a, uh, a lady in our, in my hometown and a, she had a couple of horrible experiences in her life. One was her husband was a police officer when they were young. Uh, I think in their twenties, he was shot and killed uh, in a police stop, but then her son was a cop and then he was, uh, probably I'm going to guess in his twenties as well, stopping, stopping to help somebody. He, he worked up near Chicago and was coming home to Southern Illinois, central Illinois, where I grew up and, uh, around Thanksgiving time, somebody had some sort of car problems. And so he stopped to help them, I think change a tire or something and a car hit him and killed him. And, you know, I mean, she just has not recovered since, but she started a foundation for him that, that helps uh, the families of police officers that, that, uh, that have been lost, but you know, she's had a lot of pain regarding, you know, first her husband, but then also her child, which I, you know, I think, I think a husband or a wife is, is horrible, but then a kid is, 
the worst. So I can certainly feel for the family. Mm -hmm. um, there was a report from a friend of Gabby's that came out, um, I guess within, at some point either yesterday or Friday, saying that with the way they lived, that uh, Brian's, uh, Brian is essentially, Brian Laundry is who we're talking about, her, her fiance boyfriend. Um, he's a survivalist, essentially. So it's believed that, I, I think the thought of him having taken himself out, I wouldn't say it's off the table, unless they can't find him, and he's in a swamp somewhere. I think it's more that, yeah, he's hiding. He where he's on the run. Uh, we'll sit, we can we'll analyze the police's uh, not non-action, so to speak, in this in a few minutes. Uh, Keith, you get something to? I've been down this road um, <clears throat> a couple of times. Uh, with people I know. Um, so in 2011, I was the mentor of the Rutgers University Human Resources, for lack of a better term, debate team. <clears throat> um, Rutgers is the program I graduated from, and their master's program uh, travels uh, some of their people will travel to other schools and select topics that are important to the HR community. And um, literally debate other schools, but like the top 10 HR uh, master's programs in the country will do this. And the team in 2011 was um, run by a 22 year old girl named Pamela, uh, uh, Pam Schmidt. And we were, we spent the summer preparing for uh, the, the, the debates. Not just, it's not just about the topics and getting to know the topics. That's not something that you help them with, but it's more speaking styles and uh, or, you know, organizational styles and things like that and uh, how the team works with each other, what have you. And, um, you know, she was, I never got to really know her parents, but I knew, you know, to me, she was someone I spent a lot of time with and um, uh, we got along very well. She was a very good friend. Uh, much younger than me, obviously. Um, and she's in fact the same. She was the same age then that, that my older son Justin is now. Uh, and there was a point where she went missing for a couple of days, where nobody heard from her. And um, then it was discovered that her boyfriend had just, and, and I had known about it. Her, she and her boyfriend had a lot of uh, rocky interactions, but she was like so dedicated to him. And this is so common in stories like this, where uh, she kept saying, "But if I if if I stay there with him, if I if I help him through it, he'll he'll balance, he'll he'll figure it out, he'll become more uh, rational." Um, and um, didn't work. Um, he was a drug addict, did a lot of stupid shit, and uh, he went nuts one day and beat her to death with a lamp. Wow. Um, at the time, let's see, that was 10 years ago. So Justin was 12 and Jeremy was nine. And I kind of looked at her, not, not as my daughter, but, you know, it was a, it was easy for, to feel like uh, there was a, almost a parental relationship trying to help, you know, mentor her through uh, the leadership of this organization. Um. And it's one of those where you go to the funeral and there's just like countless people all around you and very popular person, not just from Rutgers, but from our town, which is up in North Jersey. Um, and you see the agony that the parents go through. So I, I met them there. I got to talk to them there, but 
you know, they were shells of themselves. Uh, and I don't, I, I hadn't known them before, so I haven't had contact with them since. I don't know how they've fared since then. That was 2011. Um, and then fast forward to 2019, the story that you're probably more familiar with, the Uber girl from South Carolina. Um, Samantha Josephson lived in Rob, um, Robbinsville, New Jersey, um, Hamilton. I forget exactly, you know, right, right in that area. So 15 minutes from us. And uh, actually my now former wife was uh, extremely close friends with that family. Um, and I, being her husband for you know, a number of years, we used to go to parties with them and such. I remember as I saw Samantha as a little girl. Um, I watched her you know, in her early years growing. Um, Justin, when he was very young, uh, played and interacted with her. And uh, uh, the families were, were very friendly. Um, the pa parents of our families, uh, very close, very close people. Uh, but for those who don't know that story, she was a student, a senior. Uh, just like three or four weeks away from graduating from the University of South Carolina and uh, came out of a bar one night at two o'clock in the morning and took an Uber and it turned out it wasn't an Uber. Guy drove her something like 40 or 60 miles away and did things that we don't want to talk about. And she didn't make it through it. Um, my wife knew them much better than I did. Like I said, I, I was sort of the, the husband who came along with everything. <clears throat> and the impact on her and the Horowitz family, her maiden name, um, much greater than me. And you can see how, what kind of impact it had on me. Um, and I remember the talking to Justin on the phone and, and just the blank horror that he went through. Um, and so that was a total peer of his, not, not a close friend, but someone he knew and someone he had interacted with, you know, a decent amount when he was a kid uh, and someone who was at his school. Cause at that point he was a sophomore in um, at the university of South Carolina. Um, so it, it certainly was devastating for the family. Devastated the whole campus. It paralyzed the entire university. Mm -hmm. um, so when the story of Gabby came up, it, it's, you know, your heart goes out to the families, to the parents, because, you know, all of us as parents, you know, you can start to sense what you might go through. But... Um, it's so much more far ranging than that. Uh, I mean, the, the lives that these people touched, the, 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 the large uh, groups of friends, uh, the, 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 the amazing amount of people that knew these people, whether they knew Gabby or they knew uh, Sam or they knew Pam. It, it is every parent's worst nightmare. It is something that you know for me you know having seen this twice personally um i, I my kids will never understand it but I, the echoes of it literally consciously go through my head every day um and you know i'm, I'm one of those parents who learned early early on uh, i don't part from them without a big hug and I love you and all that stuff. Like it doesn't matter pretty much anytime. Uh, and I, I'm going through this week right now where I haven't heard from my kids in like a week, even though I've, I've texted them some really important stuff, you know, questions like I need answers to not the trip crickets. Cause that's just the way kids are, <clears throat> but they don't know. They don't understand that when you don't answer, what runs through your head? 
in some ways we've all been there. Jason, I know the story you told me recently, not of, uh, you know, someone from years ago that uh, our mutual friend Denise knew, knew um, you know, horrible stories like that. Yeah. Um, in one way or another, we've all been there. I'm not the only one with stories, I'm sure. Um, but it's, uh, as a parent, the kids, of course, won't know until, well, their parents. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, then it resonates. Um, it, it's, it's calling it every parent's worst nightmare doesn't even give it justice to what it actually is. Um, I, I don't know if you can put into words the depth of the horror. Just a few days ago. Um, what's today? Today's uh, Sunday morning. I think it was Wednesday in East Windsor, the town I live in, in New Jersey. I picked up a article from the previous day that a uh, serious car accident had happened where a sedan had driven straight into a um, pickup truck, not not th- four miles from my house, probably two or three, uh, and four teenagers had been seriously injured, like life-threatening critical injuries. My kids aren't even in high school anymore. Uh, I, they were teenagers, 14 to 17. So I immediately, you know, I'm in panic. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an accident in East Windsor. So I'm, first thing I do is I call the mother of <clears throat> Justin's girlfriend, who has a younger sister who's 17. And then I'm sort of going down the line. Who else do I know in the town? Who else do I know in the town? And, you know, I'm not even, I know where my kids are. They're not even in New Jersey. So I'm not worried about them, but I'm panicking because I have so many friends in the town who uh, have kids still in the school. Turned out that, and, and it's horrible, but all four kids were from uh, Allentown High School, which is a couple of towns uh, away to the south and sort of next to Hamilton. And it's horrible because the, I haven't heard the updates because they haven't released names or anything, but it's not good. The driver Mm -hmm. of the uh, pickup was minor injuries, but the four kids, we don't even know if they're going to survive. So if I heard about an accident like that in the middle of Arkansas, all this stuff would replay in my head. Forget if it wasn't two miles from my house. Yeah. Uh, And we all go through that. Every parent goes through that. When we hear every parent in this country worth a freaking damn had an agonizing moment when the story of Gabby came out. Because when the story came out, they hadn't even found her yet. But we all suspected what might have happened instantly. And we all went, we all went to that dark place. We all went to that, oh my God, what if it was mine? Or what if it was somebody close? Or and we go to that, to whatever stories we have experienced. That nightmare doesn't go away. Doesn't go away. Sorry, I, I think that was a bit long-winded, but obviously it's very personal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just was going to say, um, you know, it's uh, definitely like we were saying already, uh, one of our greatest fears is uh, losing a child and we tried to always uh, instill in our kids you know to do the right thing and uh, every time they go out you know when they're not around us we we tend to like have a little bit of fear like uh, you know uh, when they're not around us all the time and one of the things is you know uh, I live in a pretty I live in town, but, you know, everything is pretty much uh, Mayberry sometimes around here. But, um, you know, our kids, uh, they're getting older and, you know, where we come from, you know, it was like New York City and being down in like different parts of uh, New York and stuff. And it's like, all right, well, you see real crime and stuff going on. And around here, people are like, oh, well, there was a shooting in Easton the other day. And you're like, ah. have you been to Newark? Uh, you know, like, come on, really? You know, so, uh, 
we decided uh, we, we shopped around a lot of high schools for Brendan and uh, we decided that the best opportunities was like in Allentown, you know, and this uh, campus is like right in the heart of Allentown, you know, and uh, it, it's a very urban campus, you know, and they have lots of opportunities that none of the other schools offer, you know, and we were really excited about the programs and all. And now all of a sudden it's like, Every time I, I open up the, well, not open up the news here, but turn on my local like news or something, you hear about, you know, the drugs, the shootings and stuff, everything going on in Allentown, some of them only within a block or so of the school. And you're like, hmm, and I'm sending my kid there, you know? So yeah, it has uh, the extra like fear of, you know, what, what am I heading my, my son into? Not that... Uh, anything's ever happened and it's a very safe campus you know and stuff like that and i really don't have much to or uh you know worry about it in that, that sense but you know the, that, that stuff creeps into your mind kind of like what keith was saying you know and uh yeah just uh you know that's terrible news and the senseless uh acts that we constantly see played over and over again in the news and you just wonder like you know it's like you, you get like I feel like an extra fear like when your kids like I already said mm. aren't around you and they're out with somebody else or they're out doing something you know just this week we saw about the uh, supermarket shooting you know and you know can, can you just be like somewhere where somebody's going to do a act, random act of violence you know we all heard about the movie theaters you know a couple years ago and stuff and that just a senselessness of people's hopelessness is just like, I don't know if it's growing or if it's just that we hear it more often because of the news. We've already discussed those topics too, but you know, it's like, you never know where you're going to be and something like that could just happen and you could lose people at a moment's notice. And um, I was uh, thinking also as well that, you know, Keith was saying about not hearing from somebody like your kids, you know, and uh, we had like a similar scare, you know, and that's when we found out about my parents, it, you know, with the uh, had wound up uh, in the hospital is uh, basically they stopped uh, answering the phone. You know, I, I call my mom at least uh, once or so a week and it's like every Thursday night, I call my mom and she doesn't answer her phone and my dad doesn't. And it's like, all right, let's try it again. You know, they, they got to be home now. They got and that, no, and then that, that's when we came to find out that they were in the, the hospital. <laughs> it was just like, wow, you know, I mean, it could have been worse, but I mean, yeah, you know, and it's that fear, like you were saying, and then unknowing, like, because we're so like, like hooked on technology and being able to pinpoint people like through messenger or, you know, some kind of format, you're able to get in touch with somebody when you can't, it's like, well, what's going on, you know, <laughs> so yeah um yeah now there's obviously a ton of questions that still need to be answered besides from the fact of where the fiance is um and i mean one of the biggest questions is is um why you why the police department um you know wasn't i i understand pleading the fifth but uh you, you gotta think of tr at least put a trace on on the fiance at that point if he pleads the fifth obviously he's doing it for a reason I mean, if he didn't do anything, it's as simple. Even if you plead the fifth, it's as simple as saying, it's as simple as saying, I didn't do shit. You know, <laughs> I don't know where the hell she is. She, she went for a walk and didn't come back, <laughs> which if, if was actually true, <laughs> it's true. But obviously pleading the fifth, cops should have been a little bit more uh, at that point should have monitored him a little bit closer um, 
when he came home alone, that should have been a, uh, <clears throat> that would have been a good point to start monitoring this guy. You know, keep an eye on this guy. Send, you know, get somebody out there to, to I don't know, you know, for him to have shown up alone, you got to really start to wonder then what happened. Um, there's, I mean, he literally has just slipped into nothingness, it seems like. Um, I, I, I'm I'm not the I'm not the first person to necessarily defend the police. No, I don't want to defund them either. I think they have a really tough job, and uh, I think they need a lot of help from other types of experts. Uh, I believe in the concept of taking some of the money and actually bringing them uh, mental health experts, and drug addiction experts, and things like that to to really help deal you know deal with a lot of issues, but. I can certainly see the viewpoint that led to some of the stuff. Yeah, I, there's a ton of cases where someone goes missing for a few hours or even a couple of days, and most of them end up in or the person just wandered off and got busy for a while, and then they came back and were found. So if you're a cop and every hundred cases like that, you know, 95 of them or more person gets found after a while i'm sure you build up a a white noise resistance to it and you don't necessarily you're not going to jump on every single case of where somebody hasn't checked in in 20 24 hours or whatever i don't know the specifics of the gabby case and i think because of my experiences, i backed away from them i backed i i backed away from the story i didn't track it i didn't want to i hid from it uh so maybe i'm missing something in this particular story that was so obvious and the police blew it i don't know but by the time the father put out the plea to help find the daughter, it had been well over a week at that point. And that's certainly a reasonable time to be searching for the kid. Although, have you noticed, by the way, all the follow-up cases? Um, there have been a, a number of other nationally broadcast cases of kids who have been young people, we'll put it that way, mm -hmm. who have been who have disappeared for a week, but they happen to be of color, and no one's been looking yes. at them. Uh, yeah. And there's a whole brouhaha over that because oh we only, we only look for the white kids we don't look for the black kids and all that stuff and then there's the, you know it's going down the same political rabbit hole as every other damn thing that happens in this country and and i certainly understand the angst of uh different communities that might not feel like they're being treated equally um but the cops have a tough job um a lot of people kind of disappear and then show up again uh so a majority of these cases they, they almost feel like, well, kind of, if the person had just made a call, it would have been fine, but I wasted all this time. So it's got to be hard for them to, to track every single case. Um, in, in fact, I think he actually, he actually had returned home already. She, that he, that it's, he came back home September 1st. And it had been, yeah, it had been a while at that point. So, but the fact that he came back alone should have been another alarm to everybody that where the hell is she <laughs> yeah I, i'm sure this wasn't handled particularly well i like i said i i've i openly met i hid from the details i didn't even want to know uh I, I i i think i reached a breaking point after sam where it's hard to hear these stories mm -hmm. and uh it's not the right response it's not the right thing to do um I should be paying attention to all this stuff. Although, you know, when you hear it's, I forget what state they lived in, but, you know, when her remains are found in Montana and everything's all out west. Wyoming. And, yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, it's not, uh, if it was a New Jersey case, I'd probably be paying more attention or Pennsylvania or something like that. Uh, so I mean, regretfully don't know the details as much as I should. The father lives in New York. That's why I even really picked up on it. He lives in Long Island. By the time they were they put the search out for Gabby, it was a national story. It was absolutely a national story. Yep. Um, I didn't even know about the father being in New York. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, yeah, was, you, yeah. you can't hide from from most stories. And no matter how much I have my head in the sand, I uh, I did hear about the story. I just didn't read the articles. Right, right. 
um, we can you, we can go on all day. I mean, and and the rumors of where this guy's been seen are, you know, from Alabama to California. I think at this point where he's been seen recently, you know. Um, my thought is, is he may not even be in the country. He may have skipped. He may have gotten the hell out of Dodge as soon as the uh, kind of figured out that they were onto him. He, met, I got a feeling he slipped through everybody's fingers, and he could be somewhere, somewhere in Mexico. He could be somewhere in the Caribbean. I got a feeling he's gone, like gone, gone. I don't think he's so someday. Anywhere. Someday his day will come. Oh um, yeah, the person who did what he did to Pam uh, was caught right away. Uh, went to jail and in around a year, a little less than a year, around a year, his jailmates took care of him and he was taken out in the body bag. Uh, the person who did evil with Sam uh, was caught within a couple of days and uh, I think was very recently found guilty and sent to jail. And I pretty sure that that'll be taken care of soon too or at least i pray every day that it will be and that sounds horrible doesn't it no um to some people it does to some people it does and i understand it um i understand that you shouldn't wish pain or death on another person but sorry i make my exceptions um I'd be surprised it's if that's not to when somebody does something like that. Yeah. I I I, I would be um, quietly satisfied for a moment. Uh, if that happened and soon. Um, wouldn't bring Sam back, but it would um it would be justice, the kind of justice I think would happen. Isn't that really interesting? You guys may have heard a little uh, vibration in the background just now with all the, uh, I, I just said I haven't heard from my kids in a week. Uh, and sure enough, Justin just texted me. I have no idea what he wrote, but <laughs> is that serendipity or what? <laughs> so. I'm, surprised, I'm surprised your your son uh, Jeremy hasn't been all yet, or you haven't been all over Jeremy's, especially after what happened last night in the Ohio State game. Uh, I well, I've sent the messages yesterday. I you know both uh, and they both saw my posts on Facebook, I'm sure, and uh, um, they they each got messages. Uh, so and those are you know you know when I sent messages about football or baseball, I don't necessarily need a response. Although those are typically the responses I get. Uh, then the important questions about, you know, like, you know, life topics, you know, they don't bother answering it's crickets on that stuff. Oh, Chad knows that answer. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you can't corner them in your house because they're not in your house. But uh, yeah, that was serendipity. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's before noon. What, Justin, what are you doing awake on a Sunday? <laughs> Whatever. Okay. You know, Jason, going back to your to your point about, you know, why didn't they go after him? It seems like, and, and again, I, I haven't followed the case that close either, but one of the things that I remember from intro to criminal justice 40 years ago was if there's something that happens to a spouse or a member of a couple, who's the likely suspect? You know, like an 80% of the time, it's the husband sure. or the wife or the boyfriend or the girlfriend that, sure. that did this stuff. So, um, you know, it seemed like they would have been after him, but it seemed like it seems like we've had a couple of failures in law enforcement lately anyway you know i think the um you think the, the, i've been following the the, uh, the fbi and the nasser case you know and those girls saying well we we filed all this information and you know the one the i remember one girl was saying something about but they really did kind of didn't even give me any credibility that they, they didn't act like they thought i was giving them a credible story and you know they had a couple girls saying similar similar things to that so Simone Biles included yeah Simone yeah. Biles that when she said that it got out there, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and, and, and how many are there, but, but, you know, to Keith's point, man, that's a hard gig. And, and, you know, we're, we're talking about two cases out of how many hundreds of thousands of cases that are heard, you know, that the police hear about in the United States. And, you know, I think you got to pick and choose based on, you know, their professional experience and, and what they think is, is uh, true and not, but um, you know, those were a couple, I think that, that 
kind of worked out on the wrong the wrong way for them. And maybe you can go with the, they win some, they lose some, but still those are those are some pretty pretty bad cases. I mean, there's that's a hard one to lose though. Yes, absolutely. I think in, in both both those cases, because how, how many girls how many girls did Nasser continue to to abuse? Because they didn't come in and start talking to him, but I have feeling if the, if the FBI would have talked to him right away, his behavior would have changed. And but, I mean, not to, not to get off topic, but look at, look how long it took him to get Sandusky. Oh yeah, and there was yeah. reports about that all along. So. Yep. And there's uh, also. Oh. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and a different thing too is uh, that we've kind of like just touched on is also the attractiveness of saving someone or staying with somebody that, you know, puts you in a, like more or less an abusive uh, relationship where, you know, could end in uh, death and stuff. And uh, I've come across that either, you know, with myself or, and or other family members that I know that, uh, you know, staying with someone because you think you could save them. And what is so attractive to that as us as human beings, I'm not exactly sure, but it, happens like <laughs> i'm sure that all of us can name people right off the top of our heads you know where this is currently happening you know so i think that's also like part of you know this conversation mm -hmm. um well it happened to me directly uh where it was happening to me directly um i was uh did the, the the girl before i met elise um, I was, we were dating for a couple of months, a couple of weeks, actually, and her father passed away and, uh, she, was, yeah, she wasn't too bad. She was pretty normal at first. And when her father died, um, she went kind of off the deep, not a kind of, she started to go off the deep end and it started with uh verbal and physical v verbal and mental abuse um uh, and did eventually uh turn physical um still not the easiest subject to talk about for me uh but um in the end it was becoming um It was going to be, I could sense that it might have become life or death. So I decided that um, I was getting out. The final incident was horrible, but uh, got through it. I'm still here and still, you know. Hey, the last incident didn't even involve the lease. So. Uh, I won't get into exact details on that, but yeah, uh, and that's been, and that was almost 15 years ago, actually, 50, it'll be 15 years ago, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, yeah, so I, I, it's not, you know, not the easiest thing sometimes to, to deal with, um, but there's cases where uh, people don't talk either. That victims don't come out till it's too late, too. Which um, we're starting to see as more and more reports come out because now there's a report, and I don't think it's a report. I think it's documented that we had. Of course, we know you know about the nine one one call from a couple of weeks from. In August, I think it was, I believe mid-August somewhere, there's a 911 call involved of Brian Laundrie slapping Gabby. Um, and then there's now the reported incident in the restaurant. Um, I mean, among other things, with even a park ranger in, I believe in Grand Teton, saying to her right before everything went down you shouldn't be here 
you shouldn't be in this relationship. Maybe you should get out. Um, and if, like I said, there's there's an altercation in a restaurant as well, which is apparently now the night before um, it's believed everything went down. Um, that the final uh, moment, it probably really was in her final moments, somewhat at least, or final hours with the incident in the restaurant. It, it is just stories just very, very convoluted, somewhat still. Maybe one day we'll get the whole story, but um, even if they do catch him, you know we're never going to hear his side of the story. You're never going to hear all the details of everything. It's not going to happen. But you can't because his view of what happened is his view sure. and it's sure. certainly not uh, a view that's uh, that can't st- probably, that probably can't correct and... what it all comes down to that the only person who probably would tell you the truth is can't talk well and, and if you recall I don't know if you guys saw much of it I just saw a little bit of it was when the police were talking to the couple and Gabby was there saying, oh, it, it, it's my fault. Uh, it's yeah. so, something about, it's my fault. I, I have OCD and I was doing something to upset him. And I'm like, what? whoa, hold on a minute. Yep. You know what I mean? But, but she had, she's internalized the, mm-hmm. the, the taking of the abuse and somehow either from when she was a little girl or from something he's done to convince her that what happens is her fault. And, you know, and then I, I guess let me say this too, is somebody had had a post um, and it said uh, something like, uh, you know, now some like everybody wants the girls to be strong, but now is the time for the parents to teach to teach their sons about about toxic masculinity or something like that. And I was like, I looked and I was like, listen, everybody everybody needs to be involved in this. I'm like, you can't just. I would never rely on anybody else. I, I want I want my son to be fully prepared. I want my kids to be fully prepared. To handle these situations, whether it's whether you know it, it's Valentina or whether it's Frankie, I want them both. I, I don't want Frankie to be, you know, I, I I've taught him how to treat a woman, and I and I, I want Valentina to know how she's supposed to be treated as well, and to not internalize, you know, oh, if, if he's he or she is doing something to me, I deserve it because who knows what, you know, and insert BS explanation here, you know, people have people have a right to be treated be treated right. Mm-hmm. so when I um, the first story I told I had a, a late lunch with Pam the day she disappeared um, and I remember at the end of the lunch she said that she had to get back because he'd be upset if uh, if she wasn't at the apartment <sighs> At a certain time, but we kept talking. We had this kind of rapport, where, you know, it was one of those you could talk all day, all night, whatever. Um, but in those conversations, she would talk about how if she could show him the, that she was dedicated to the relationship, that she believed in him, that someone could uh, see the, the good things in him, that he would get better, that he would not be as uh, unpredictable, that he wouldn't use the drugs as much. I mean, she knew she w- he was doing it. Um, and she, you know, she just believed he would become a better person if she was there helping him, uh, believing in him. Uh, and yet she was late. And nobody knows, like you said, nobody knows exactly what happened. We know how she died, but we, she may have predicted her own passing because she kind of told me that he would react funny if he was if she wasn't there at a certain time. And then, you know, just like you said, Chad, it was, it was one of those things where I kept looking at her like, Are you sure you know what you're doing? Are you sure you're in the right place? I'd never met him, so I I didn't feel it was my place to say you shouldn't be there. But mm-hmm. the whole conversation kind of pointed that way. So um, I, I think there's always people in the environment of 
unstable people who know what's going on. Uh, and maybe we don't voice our opinions as much as we should. <clears throat> maybe we don't, because uh, you know, we, we want people to be able to be autonomous and make their own decisions. But there's only so much you can do for another person. They have to you know, certainly see it for themselves. Mm -hmm. I been texting with Justin while we were talking, by the way, and uh, I mentioned, of course, it was a sports comment that he sent to me, but I mentioned to him what we were doing and the topic we, we had. Um, my son stopped talking about sports and he simply said, go finish the pod. And I could sense in that he knows exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So for all the crap I give him for the fact that he never answers when I want him to answer, he knows this is important. Mm -hmm. and to your point Keith too you know helping people I you know I've got a, I've got a great personal example of my own family and that's my sister from the time she was probably 14 until probably in her mid-30s had uh, an alcohol problem and my my mom and my stepdad did everything they could to help her and they finally got her turn right so she got married had a couple of kids and then, uh, then she got a divorce from her husband and she just went downhill so fast and, and, and it was just horrible. So she was, she would go over to my parents' house and tell them that she was, she had, was going to have people come over and kill them. And it was just out of hand. So, I mean, and, and, and I think my patients would have, and, and again, it, it, it's different. I think when you're in that situation, but I think my patients would have worn through years before that. But then just the way she was behaving at the end, they just said, they just said, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no more of this. Don't contact us anymore. So she's, I, I say she's, she's underground, right? So she's, she's living in this other town that isn't really a nice town. And it's kind of a, a town known for drug use. And she, I think she's um, progressed on or, or moved on, moved on to other, other types of, of drugs. But, you know, it, it's the same as I think, these people have, some of these people have experienced in, in their relationships as well. You know, the, the story you're talking about, Keith, and then the story at hand with, with, with this uh, Gabby girl, you know, they, they, they stay, even though it's not necessarily a good, a good situation for them. Um, and I think, you know, luckily my, my parents at that time had enough, had, had enough knowledge and I think it had enough, enough of the BS that they said, yeah, this is it and, and cut her off. But it, it, it's hard to do that with, 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 with a youngster, you know, with somebody who's 20, 25, for them to understand where they are. Because, it, and, it, and it's a positive thing because they do want to help, but the negative part is that they, that they stay too long and if something bad happens to them. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking about some of the things that uh, you were saying, Chad, earlier about teaching your children, um, you know, how to treat people and how they should be treated. And uh, uh, just for myself, uh, thinking about my boys and all, uh, I think that like right now we're going through, um, you know, my kids are starting to be teens and starting high school, like I said, and middle school and stuff. And uh, part of it, I guess it starts out of, out of small things, you know, either kids teasing each other on the playground is what we were saying with Colin and the starting of like, rumors you know and how that just starts you know with you uh, Colin is uh, really affected by people's behaviors and stuff all the time and his friends and caring for them and stuff and uh, when they start to you know uh, kids start um, spreading rumors about each other and how he was like like keeping it all to himself just the fact that uh like uh just spreading of rumors and how they affected him and all and he was like but it's you know for me and this is my problem and all and it's like no you could explain it to us and maybe we can help you and stuff and just uh like you said just teaching them you know that uh how they should feel and how they should handle things is very important because things start like that you know it's the little rumors and the little like things that uh, go on, which lead to bigger things, you know, which lead to as more as adults, you know, uh, dealing with an abusive person who either, uh, whether it's alcohol or drugs, and uh, it leads right into uh, 
you know, family member that we had that uh, if he didn't die of an overdose, we could have seen her, you know, uh, that the way things were heading. And no matter how much you explain and talk about these things to them, and, you know, they, they just don't uh, see it that way. And, uh, you know, uh, I think you're hundred percent correct. It, you know, it really starts with uh, getting knowledge out there to our, our kids, you know, with uh, how you should treat people and how they people should treat you. Yeah. And, and, and I think to your point, Doug, I, I know that's a, it's probably a hard conversation to have because if he wants to keep that to himself and doesn't want to share, but as a parent, you just, you're just like, tell, just tell me, just open up and let me know. I'm your, you know, I'm your mom, I'm your dad. And let, let's, let's work through this because we can, we can advise you. But I think at that age too, they're starting to become independent to a certain extent. And, and uh, it, it's difficult because they don't want to tell mom or dad and, and maybe they have a little embarrassment about it, but you know, it's just hard. I, I remember struggling through some of those times with, uh, with Frankie as well, but it, it's, you know, to your point, it, it's important because as they grow older and if they internalize some of that, some of that stuff that, that the other kids do, it's not a, not a good, not a good uh, situation. Yeah. Um, we, we could probably go on another three or four episodes doing this if we really, um, we really sat here and, and thought about it and talked about it. I'm sure a lot would come out too. Um, maybe some things we really don't want to talk about, but uh, that tends to happen pretty often anyway. Um, <laughs> because we've, we've heard some stuff, especially for the last six months or so that, that we've all said that we all kind of just went, wait, you never told us that. I think we've done that about five or six times now in the last couple of months. Um, but um, I don't. I, you never want to think about something like this happening to anyone. I mean, these stories are always hard to to uh, deal with. I mean, I, you know, when we were, when I was young um, and I was only a couple of years older than him, um, or actually, I don't know if I was or not, I think I was, uh, there was a disappearance of um, a young boy named Timothy Wiltsey, who um, was kidnapped from a kidnapped from a um a fair saint stan's fair in sayerville next town over um and his mother was out there you know we like similar to gabby's father you know pleading for the return of her son and and how to find my son and all this stuff and what turned out to be crocodile tears uh, for her lost child. They found him um, a few months later in Raritan Center in the swamps up there. It took them 20 something years to figure out, but charged and convicted his mother with his murder. Um, it, it, that was a horrifying story. I mean, it ha and it's happened. I, I can name two other stories where it's been, where the end result has been the same. Um, and in both cases, I actually know, vaguely know one, no one pretty well the people that were convicted of the crimes. So, uh, and these were very young girls. Uh, well, not very young, but uh, teenage girls who this happened to. Uh, I ooh, uh, give you the details of everything, but uh, one was just, uh, one happened 
before 2000, I think it was the late 90s, um, early 2000s, and then they just picked him up for it. It was a cold case, and they just picked him up a couple of weeks ago, the uh, accused uh, person who, who killed uh, Nancy Noggin was... Um, they accused him. They finally arrested him recently, like two, like less than a month ago. They arrested him. Um, so yeah, and and sometimes it takes them a long time to uh, get these cases rolling. Um, but it's it's just now you know. I mean, I was like I said, I was young when when all these happened. Fairly young, in my early twenties, probably when the last one happened. Um, but it definitely takes a different perspective now. Being a father, it definitely takes a different perspective now. Um, looking at the time, we're almost up to an hour here now. Um, Anybody have anything they they want to add before we uh, wrap this up? Let there be no more stories. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, I, th I think when we started this story, I was thinking about the specific case, but you know, I think as we talked about it more and more, I could relate it more to my life and to 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 my kids and how to to teach them and to to try to help them not to get into relationships like that and, and, and it's very unlikely and I hope that it never happens to any of us that our kids are in a relation like 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 Gabby and, and this guy but um, you know just to have the healthy relationships is so important and and how we can do our part to to uh, to help them to get there Don't get any honor. <laughs> I actually I apparently I saw something in a glimpse of something that he may actually be involved in this now. Uh, yeah, I, I think like I that saw that. Yeah, I, I was like, wait, I looked for something to try to get the date of when the father uh, came out with this whole story. Not a um, story, when he came out about, um, about Gabby's disappearance. And I think thought I saw a picture, a glimpse of his mug and hair. Actually, I saw the hair first before I saw anything else of Dog the Bounty Hunter. I was like, oh, I'm sure he's involved in this. Um, <laughs> I don't even get me started on that guy. Um, <laughs> there's a very famous song. Um from CSN, CSN and Y, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, teach your children well. Uh, it's, that song has always been a, uh, at times hard song to listen to for me. Um, it's very emotional. It's a really well written song, which most of their songs were, are. Uh, they're still, <laughs> amazingly, after all the shit they've been through, all of them are still around. Um, but yeah, going back to what you said, Chad, uh, teaching our kids is the most, on all, all aspects of this. Um, because to, I, to say there aren't females who are capable of that kind of violence as well, um, it kind of gets overlooked. We're swept under the rug where we don't hear it as often because of some of the stereotypes in this world. Um, but... Um, yeah that's all we really can do that and hope and pray that this will 
be the last time we ever hear of this, but I think we all know deep down uh, we can say that it's the old th theory of you can wish in one hand and shit in the other. You know which one's going to fill up first. Um, <laughs> I, I keep rolling his eyes after that one. <laughs> Um, certainly, yeah, that's an expression I hadn't heard before, but um, I'll remember it now, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but hopefully, um, with the exposure of this story and of her passing and of the whole case. Um, we can hope that this will broaden this spectrum of an observate of the observations of and of the cases of domestic violence, which deep down going to the heart of the matter, this is a an example of exactly what that is it's got it's a case of domestic violence that went to the worst possible outcome um it's been said i've seen it on facebook you know hold them a little closer today I'll hold them a little closer right now um if you can, yeah, do. Um, but uh, I'm saying this for the first time. I've got nothing else. I've just got nothing else anymore. Not today. So from all of us here at Dad's on Life, take care, everybody. Take care. Hold close. Hold close for sure. Allergies and